Hey there, <laughs> welcome to Cambridge Inside Out. Hi. And I'm Robert Winters. I'm Judy Nathans. And today is July 31st. Last day of July. 2018. Of 2018. Yeah, and, and also the day after the one summer and meeting. only yeah. meeting of the Cambridge City Council for right. the summer. Right. And as and we... Then, and there won't be another one really for quite a while. Uh, until about mid-September. September 17th because of Jewish holidays and yeah. Labor Day and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, um, and it was, uh, and actually, I, I thought I'd bring the oh visual God. here. Uh, you know, it's it truly is one thousand and one pages. Yeah, thousand and one pages. Uh, the the meeting materials, right? So every city council had a little book, a big special binder that had this big stack in there. I think because right. there were a lot of committee reports that had stacked up, and that they all had attachments yeah. and stuff. So yeah, that's part so of it. yeah. Yeah. The the truth is, I've been at summer meetings where um, there were the number of resolutions was well in excess of 100. Resolutions? Uh, resolutions, and there have been orders that were 40, 50s. Mm. Because orders. they wanted to get everything in? Well, what happened is, is because there's no intervening meetings right. since sometimes so mid-June. So it's all like pent-up actions. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you know, people wrote an order, and they go, well, we'll just put it on the agenda for the midsummer meeting, and there then should the, be a limit on another, week pass, another week pass, another week pass, another week pass. And so you end up with a big, big stack of orders and resolutions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, you know, and, it, and in this case here, committee reports and other matters as well. So it's not un, it's not unusual that you would have a lot and of there were a lot of awaiting business. reports that uh, came back from the city manager. That's right. had a chance, so that added to all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing is, so, so the, in truth, though, the total number of city council orders and resolutions weren't that many. No, I think it was about was 30 what, resolutions, 17 19, orders, 17 something orders, like that. Yeah. Right, it's not that many. The manager's agenda, you know, could have been Fifty items. It was about thirty. No, it was about twenty-three. I think. That's all. Yeah. So it wasn't that many, but uh, but there were a couple of big juicy items. Like to yeah. be sure. Yeah. I, I, um, the and ones that they as discussed. you correctly pointed out, there mm -hmm. were I think seven committee reports, and it's mm -hmm. become the practice. I kind of almost wish that they wouldn't include them, but you know when you go to a ca uh, a meeting, yeah. there's sometimes there's some supplemental materials that are there, and um, you know a report or whatever, and they just. They just print out the whole thing. If there's a PowerPoint pre uh, right. presentation, but it's also the it. minutes, though, of the meetings, which the is important good. because a yeah. lot of them are not televised. Right. So the you minutes, don't know what happens. the minutes of the meetings, I yeah. I post complete every single time. It's just that all the attachments I don't include. You're talking about the minutes of the of, of which yeah. meetings, the committee uh, reports. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They don't always come out timely. Enough. Right. So on, on Civic Journal, actually, I have like a little PDF version of like I used to call it my compact guide to city mm -hmm. council meeting. Yeah. You know, it's actually, I you know, yeah, I put it together for myself, but there were there were there used to be at least be a few department heads who said, yeah, I'd print this one out, I'd use this. So is this the minutes better. of the council meetings or of committee? Well, these are just on all the agenda items. But oh, the thing okay. is, is yeah. that in the in the HTML version that I have online, yeah. I include all of the, right. the text of the committee right. reports. Right. Didn't always do that, but I've been doing that for I don't know. Well, eight I, years I or enjoy something. it because if I can't be at the meeting, well, uh, I, I put it in. I put it in there just to make it searchable, uh, and oh. sometimes there've been mm -hmm. actually. The, the documents would just be included just as scans and it wasn't right. searchable text. And uh, you know, if you, you know, if 20 years later you want to actually find Yours something. Yours is searchable, the way you do it? Yes, it's everything wow. searchable. So you can Google things on Wait, my on site. on your site it's searchable? Everything. There's wow. even a search window in there. You can hmm. search for anything. And people use it all the time. Wow. Now, <laughs> that's like, that's I like, didn't realize and, that, wow. You know, for example, I actually, I, I haven't responded and if you're watching, you know, I'm uh -oh. sorry, but there was one agenda item had to do with a, this sort of a, a problematic situation up at Sherman Street, oh, where the, the railroad, yeah. the commuter the, rail goes uh, through and it blasts the sound. horn. Yeah, um, and it didn't always blast the horn like that. Um, they let it go because it was. I think the reason. I think it it was supposed to be. They were supposed to be blasting the horn according to federal guidelines, right? But then they didn't for a long time, and then they like finally years. they finally got around and said, "Well, we're really we're required to do There's this." A certain speed limit they had to post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so they started blasting the horn. I tell you, I was at the jazz festival on Sunday, which was a great thing to talk yeah, about anyway. Briefly, yeah. But um, then you know when uh, you could hear the train coming because it's just down the way. You can hear the train uh, broadcasting all across Danting Park, and it is loud. <laughs> the so horn, because I've the heard horn. the trains. Is it, is the horn oh, yeah, you, you'd hear the horn, but then the, they, they lean on the horn, and this huge, loud horn comes right across. Hmm. You know, 
<laughs> sort of blended in with the jazz music. It wouldn't be too right. pleasant. If, it's if you were right next to it, yeah. No, if it's a, not, the complaint is it's at 3 in the morning and at uh, 6 in the morning or something like that. Um, yeah, because the thing so. is, you know, sometimes the commuter rails don't really run trains during weekends. But this one, I, there are actually trains do run. Yeah. Not as frequently on the weekends, but, but they, they do, do run. run. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> anyway, just mention about the site and it being searchable is that, uh, so I get emails and it, this is actually a routine. Somebody says, well, I heard somewhere that they actually, there was, uh, the council had a discussion about this in 2005. Oh. Um, the city didn't seem to have any materials about it. Do you? And sometimes the answer I it have is, yeah, I have but where it. Would you, what would you say? Do you, you mean everything you... Well, the um, thing is, is that, it, you know, before they put everything online, yeah. um, you know, the city clerk would have everything on record. They still have everything on record. I know, but it's very hard to search. You can't search. You, you can't, no. no. But the thing is, is that you can, um, you could ask the city clerk to dig something out, and it, if you're mm. nice, she'll do it. Mm. Um, so you can get pretty much anything yeah. that was ever done. Yeah, right? but it's not, you can't do it. Yourself. Well, you can, you can, but you have to go through if a lot you of stuff. If you search, I did try not, to, do that, not yeah. to be too critical here yeah. of the city website, but they do <clears> have a search function on the city website. And if you <clears> search for something, you know, which is reasonably narrow focus, it will give you 5,000 right. kits right. in no particularly perfect order. Right. And then you could spend the weekend just trying to I find know. something. I know. That you know. happened to me. So it's not a very good search function at yeah. all. No, I... At least I, I've <coughs> never found it to be a very <coughs> good search function. I actually... And this is true actually for a lot of uh, websites, including the city websites, and actually some academic websites, like MIT website and Harvard websites. Sometimes if there's a search function, best thing to do is leave the site, go back to Google, oh. and Google it, and it'll find it quicker yeah, from don't. outside than if you try and do it inside within the, your own search yeah. function. And I, that's okay. sort of embarrassing, but, it, yeah. but it's the way it is. I'll have to experiment on your right. site. I've well, on mine, it, yeah. it's actually, it's, it's hardwired like into Google. It's a Google something? search. It's, it's a Google it's search. It's right within the site. So, ah. you know, um, you can do site, uh, website domain specific searches in Google. You just have to go site colon and then put the, but, uh, the but, domain. But in. how, I'm, this is, goes beyond this. Topic. And mine does that automatically. But how do you, when you put these things in, how does it become searchable? Just the way you have put it in, coded it in, or something? When you or? when you put something in as an HTML document, oh HTML, right? Okay. And nowadays, actually, even a PDF document, as long say, as yeah. as long as it's savable text, as opposed to a, like a like a scan. Yeah. Um, the thing so, is, is okay. that there are these spiders that are there. No, no, they're spiders. Like Google, Bing, all these other very major search they're not engines. Not bots. They're spiders. They are. They are bots. They're but they bots, call them okay. spiders because what they do is they drop into your site and then they, they follow a, a link to another document and then they follow every link they can it find. It does it in automatically. There. And it, they do it automatically. Uh, I will tell you when, like um, Microsoft Bing, when you know if oh. they're if it's a time <coughs> when they're spidering your site, which they do pretty frequently, they'll use up all the resources of your site because it's so extensive, all right? I, so you actually sometimes How have to- How do you to, know that? Uh, because there are, you can check web statistics. And wow. I've done that because I was, there was some performance problems a few years ago and I checked it out and it turned out it was Microsoft. <gasps> it was when it was, you know, I thought it was like a oh denial of service attack from some, you know, r some this kid in Russia. This is all making me very nervous because <laughs> actually everything, because you don't have a, you don't but, encrypt but you know, your site. No, no, but the thing yeah. is, yeah, the, the thing is, is that th to have the capability to have something like Google just find everything in the yeah. universe means that they have to be able to do this. Well, so yeah. By, so just by default, I any standard HTML document, you can actually say no robots. You can block them. And, you and can? Yeah, you can do that. In, but they don't all respect the instructions because it's really more yeah. in the nature of a request. Sure. To not do that. You're not hiding anything that's I'm information that yeah, you yeah, want no, people I want to everybody have it. to find my stuff. The reason I keep it up there, kind of like as a giganto, gigantic yeah. archive, is so people can find stuff. Is it Google or Microsoft that's trying to digitize everything written? Uh, the Google, library certainly. Or yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah, I think Google. Yeah, well, they're doing Google okay. Books. I think Google know. and Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Book, yeah. yeah, yeah. Google yeah. and Amazon just our lives. Right. All right, so <laughs> let's get back to. Okay, so how did we get off on this tangent? Oh, because of. The agenda somebody asking about well, maybe it was oh, the why it was so big and, yeah, and yeah. attachments and all that and that you can you could search. That's okay. right. So basically. There's one page for every Arabian night. So what was the, 
some big takeaways from last night. It was basically the petition. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and there the process, right? Yeah, there were some sort of major items to be sure who are, that were on this agenda, right? Yes. But I would, I'd have to say the biggest one was the, um, I've been calling it the Nakagawa Brown Nakagawa petition. Brown petition. Yeah. Well, that's I, what it and, is. Well, they call it the Brown petition because he was the first signer. Oh, okay. But because it, there was so much focus was on. Um, uh, flooding in Airwife. Right. And that was Mike Nakagawa's big thing for years, long before it got all political. Oh, he was huh. a sincerely interested he, person was, about okay. overland flooding and, and building in the floodplain. You know? Yeah. So, I, I, you know, so by my choice, I wanted to put his name yeah. on the top line. Okay. Yeah, because I thought that's kind of the sincere okay. starting, starting point. But in my view, the Nakagawa Brown petition was sort of a, a cobbled together version of good intentions of somebody like Mike Nakagawa. I wasn't there at the drafting, so this is pure speculation, sure, of course. Yeah. And then the sort of what I would characterize as kind of a Fresh Pond Residence Alliance type of ethos about stop the development. We don't like traffic on Fresh Pond Park Lane, right? So, so they sort of pulled this all together. Um, remember, you know, we've talked about it before. This, yeah. There was originally going to be this petition that was supposed to be filed in early April called the PAUSE petition that was Mm. All about putting a moratorium on development, and then but basically around that area or any flood plain. Yeah, area. but the pause petition yeah. got hammered even before it got filed, yeah. so it never got filed. And then a week or so later, Nakagawa Brown this petition came out. comes okay. in. So, th which you know, affects the whole city. Which yeah, is, I so I thought the that difference. was the yeah. that I think was the fatal flaw that it in it their tried to strategy. Well, old buildings, new everything, right? Yeah, so Nakagawa Brown was all about. Um, they, they call it the, some people were calling it the climate safety petition, but let's, the that's green, this. Green factors. Yeah, part yeah. Of it. I don't know all so This is like sales pitch though, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, you know, and they were trying to say like, well, we're doing this because we have to protect future generations. And, you know, and if 500 you, year flood. Right. So if you build things here like so, then one day people are going to be somehow unsafe or whatever, you know. And, you know, from the get go, I thought, well, you know, you can't really get the financing to build, if anything, <laughs> really, yeah. if, the, if the bank or the financiers feel that, that the, the project is going to be laid waste five years later or 10 years later, 15 years later. So, so therefore, there's already something that can I think, and, and actually, I've heard the city engineers and even John Volder from the um, climate, you know, climate right. uh, preparedness yeah. people of the city say, you know, if you know if these major effects of overland flooding or or um, storm surges or whatever come to pass, and I imagine many of them will, yeah, um, that that's not happening tomorrow, and the lifetime of a of some buildings is not meant to be, or they don't anticipate them to be two hundred year buildings. Mm -hmm. So yeah, is it possible that that fifty years from now there'll be a building that has the you know the seashore <laughs> lapping at the front door? Well, it's could, it could happen. But some of those new buildings, have they been built with any of the new actually, uh, guidelines? Um, that's what I, I, I'm th confused that's, by. Actually, that was part of the discussion last night. Yeah. The truth is, is that the planning board and the community development staff, to whatever degree you need to get a special permit, and almost all these projects need that, um, you have to meet a lot of strict guidelines. And Owen O'Riordan from the Public Works Department and Kathy Watkins, city engineer, mm -hmm. They're going to say, well, wh where's your compensatory flood storage? Are, mm -hmm. is, is, the, is the building of this building going to make flood conditions better than they were before you built the building? Mm -hmm. That's the standard they maintain. So mm -hmm. the notion that somehow the city is doing nothing, which mm -hmm. is what some people or were not suggesting. Or that, not that, fast enough. Or not fast enough. That seemed to be the message is it's not urgent enough. And I... Right, I, but then I, I don't know. I guess I'm just well. They a come moderate, in. They you know? come in with a with a with a petition that yeah. where their standards are based on 500 year floodplains, yeah. which, you know, basically put me on the map, which is mm. I had never seen that done before. I'd be gone. Probably. So <laughs> I'm right on you know, Charles River. So I think yeah. even this this the people who really know about this, mm. you know, with the climate preparedness people, mm. thought that was a bit of an overreach. Mm. I don't know if they said that explicitly, but I think they, they that was the sense. It, and the planning board absolutely yeah, thought it, it was. It just an it would impact too many buildings. I mean, there's some really good ideas in it, and I think that that's. So yes. Yeah, so if nothing else, it's inform people of what is possible or what we should be doing, and and maybe to put a, you know, a little more of an urgency under things, but not to. It's like it seemed to be saying the city isn't doing. 
enough. I wouldn't say it's a gay or nothing. But, but I would actually yeah. make the point that there are some people who are choosing to be so zealous about this mm. that no matter what you came back with, no yeah. matter what the city would say, you'd be, they'd be saying it's not enough. So well, you would never be able to satisfy it, them. Yeah. So it's like we have to be extreme in order to get anything yeah. done. It so seems to be the politics of the day. Let's anyway. first say what actually yeah. happened last night. Okay. okay. So, it, boy, so the let thing you is, say is, because I was watching it's it. It's a little and boy, confusing. It was confusing. All right. So this petition, I think, arrived. Maybe, was it in April or May or something I like that? Know. Right. Okay. And it, it had one path at the uh, or at the planning board, mm -hmm. which only makes recommendations. There's nothing the planning board says as far as zoning recommendations are binding. All right. Special okay. permits, another thing, but zoning recommendations, just recommendations, right? And they got virtu virtu almost unanimous disapproval. And in fact, the planning board report was part of this agenda. Right. Okay. Um, you know, it was agenda item 21. That's right. what a lot of people are Right. Saying. So that's the planning board report. Mm -hmm. But in addition, the city council's ordinance committee had also had one a, hearing a on this. A very long meeting. I watched that. Right. Five and, and a half hours. And so the matter is still in committee technically. But the thing is, is the ordinance committee report came back, you know, with a report on what's going on. Now, what that meant, no, and in the, <laughs> at a, both the Wait, planning board yeah, and the ordinance. Yeah, what was the BZA part of it? I didn't get that. Wasn't there a rule? Um, the BZA said they couldn't rule on anything because there was no action taken yet? That has to do specifically oh. with the Miller's River. Oh, the Miller's River. Oh, right. Okay, that's, right. you can so, bring that up. So, yeah. um, so you know, though I think it was a little too overly focused on this one project, the Millers River right. renovations, which yeah. is the Cambridge Housing Authority building that is long past overdue for right. renovations. And they were afraid their financing and whatever would be jeopardized That's right. by this petition. Th right, because as they say, when you Even go get a building permit and there's, yeah. a, there's a zoning uh, a petition. petition pending, you get a little asterisk on your, you know, saying you proceed at your own risk. At risk. And then the banks, the financiers, they see that and they go, oh, this is at risk? Mm -hmm. well, no, no, thank you. Right. <laughs> see, they say no, thank you. And it's that yeah. simple. In fact, yeah. I would make the case that some of the banks, some of the financiers, they, it's not even a matter of choice. It's a matter of law Legality. in some yeah. cases mm -hmm. where they're not permitted legally to put the, the bank the or the, right. or the pension or funds money at risk. Or whatever. Yeah. All right. Any more than a bank can give you a mortgage today. Mm -hmm if you don't meet certain rigid criteria to qualify, mm. right? There was a time you could, but not today, mm. right? So, so anyway, so the city council had a range of things that they could have done, all right? One thing they could have done is just said, eh, the hell with it, we just, we'll just keep it in committee and we'll see you later, right? They could have, um, uh, well, keeping it in committee would just have it just expire on its own. I think that because, unless you were to uh, uh, schedule another city a council meeting between now meeting. and mid-September, well, then, then in fact the, um, the ability to act on it, because you have to pass to a pass. second reading, right, from and the then it's got to be advertised, yeah. and you've got to right. do all of this before so the deadline. So all that would, and, and, and it was going to expire right. on the 25th? Or right. The 7th? So, yeah. yeah, so the only way this could have actually proceeded is they would have had to have passed it to a second reading. They would have to vote in favor of or, passing it to a second reading. Right. So right. the thing is, is that then you would, but then, you know, and then it would go to be, would still, you could keep it in committee or you could not keep it in committee. Right. But, you know, when you pass to a second reading, it goes on unfinished business and then it's in the queue for possible ordination. Now, the petitioners, all of the city councils all said, well, we're not going to be passing it this round anyway. So in a lot of, even I the petitioner said that. Yeah, they s and it, actually, there's one thing it said. The peti one of the petitioners said that I actually found re kind of repulsive. He said, "Well, this w we we never intended the petition to pass as written." Oh right, and there I, were these I, amendments and I that go, they were going. Yeah, I go, yeah. hold on a minute. Yeah. So you writing a petition, uh, which is a pretty serious business, and you're yeah. throwing it into the hands of the city councilor and the oh, ordinance no, committee. Right. Basically, board, you, you're everybody. treating it like it's yeah. a damn labor negotiation. Like mm. we're gonna we're gonna come in real hardball here, and then we're gonna set a cut. No, that's not how it's supposed to work. Well, I thought it just it meant they were amenable to putting amendments in which they came up with. Or which I, I that's know. fine if you're if you're open to amendment. Well, that's because what I thought they were saying. No, they actually said this was never intended oh, okay. to pass as 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 filed. Now, now that's ridiculous. 
to me, you file what you want passed. Mm. And then if there's pushback, you go, okay, what doesn't work, right? But there, but but in between the ordinance committee meeting and and today, uh, yesterday, there was, they got, they did revise some things. I thought they can't. Oh, so see, that's one thing people need to understand gonna, is that yeah. the petitioners, they actually even said that they were going back to the people who signed the petition, getting them to sign another paper. Well, to that's say that's only if the Miller's thing was definitely going to be jeopardized. Right. They said they would withdraw it themselves. Right. No, the but thing is, that, is that yeah. you know, even the person who wrote the petition cannot withdraw the petition. It has to be the other way. Well, there has to be 10 valid signatures to have the uh, um, you know, registered voters to be a valid petition. And I think if you had 20, I think if you had like, tw I don't know how many uh, they had in the signatures, yeah. but if let's, for example, said if there were 26 valid signatures on it, yeah. you'd have to uh, get 17 people to say we, we, we pulled yeah. because okay. then you've reduced to nine right. and then it's no longer live, right? right? At least that's been my interpretation. Um, the truth is, is when you file it, you don't own it anymore, buddy. The mm. city council owns it. You have thrown it into their court, and it's for them to adjudicate. It's that simple. And and the council, it was pretty clear. It was it was a lot of property owner opposition, right? Probably possibly I trade don't know. trade unions. And they right. Got all the workers but but the out. thing is, is that yeah. the way it works under state law, mm. um, it requires a six out of nine vote. You know, two thirds majority for zoning uh, amendments. Well, if it gone to a second reading and all that. Right. right? Yeah. So it would need six votes anyway. Right. It didn't have six votes. No. Furthermore, if you have more than I believe it's twenty percent of the total property owners uh, ownership that would be affected file letters of protest, then it becomes a super duper majority so of three so quarters. They, I saw there were letters. Did so they yeah, do that? I don't. Kn I don't know that it. it well, would, they would certainly ever get would have if it had gone that far. They'd I mean, I don't know because that. sometimes when you have something that's so broad yeah. uh, geographically, yeah, then you, you know it's a it's a hard thing to gather up enough property owners to reach the twenty percent. Yeah. But if you get MIT and Harvard, yeah. and Boston properties and a few other. You know, if, big it, if it went items, by, uh, you might square hit it pretty quick. Versus ownership, maybe it is on square footage. Oh well, then you probably yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so it, it, you know, if this thing was going to require seven votes anyway, six, honestly, six, I don't know what the seven. heck they were talking I it was about six. last night. You said two thirds. But it, if it, but if it, were, if you had enough protest, then it would have required a seven. Oh vote. wow, really? They don't like announce threes. that until oh, wow. until it's pretty I didn't much realize that. time so, time of ordination. So it goes higher in terms of yeah, wow. a much higher. I mean. The main gist of it was that they wanted it to expire naturally because then it could be refiled. And, refiled. and, and if it wasn't, if it went the other way, they, they had two year right. moratorium. And Isn't I that the big issue? Yeah. So the thing is, under okay. state law, yeah. if, if, some, if a, a zoning petition receives negative action, and there's a variety of ways you can right. be considered neg negative action, right. then, um, then there's a prohibition. Against what you might call serial filings, you can't just well. I'll just it put it back have in to again. Be drastically different, from right? The yeah, fundamentally petition. different. Okay. You know, and then that's a little bit of open to interpretation, sure. I suppose, right? But um, now the thing is, is that if they said, "Oh no, 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 we're not going to file it," you know, we're, we'll take it back. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. Right? And, yeah. So just to, so then give us let it just not expire naturally, naturally yeah. and then we'll wait. Right. Well, the thing is, if you're the developers down in you know, Cambridge Housing Authority, whatever, yeah. Again, you're basically saying, it, you're yeah. saying, oh, we're going to take your word for it? Right. Yeah, let me tell that to my lenders, right? Yeah. So that was kind of the problem. Yeah, well, um, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't concrete Right, enough. and as Mayor McGovern pointed out, too, mm -hmm. there were actually quite a, there's a nice long, long growing list of other projects that are kind of anticipated yeah. that would be just as, Right. Affected by this, but then, ones with but then the counselors that were really wanted this to go through basically said, "Well, wait a minute, that could go on forever. There's always going to be petitions and stuff." But I, I don't know. So yeah, I suppose you could make that case, <coughs> but that was sort of that was part yeah. of the yeah. rhetoric last night. So anyway, the the workaround, the, the the way to basically do this, you had to sort of say you had to give negative action. I thought it was the right thing to do, but yeah. the thing is, is that how do you actually do negative action when the matter is not up for vote? So you had to first refer it back to committee, right? Well, right. no, no, you Can accept you the report. Can you explain this in two and a half minutes? So you, quickly. you accept the report, accept the report place, on file, place but, on file, and then the question is, you can, and then usually there's a third option, say, and pass to a second reading. Now, if you just didn't say anything, like you say, well, you know, then it would just stay in committee. Which you, is what they wanted. Right, I think some, four of the councilors yeah. wanted to do that. Yeah. 
But the thing is, is that if you say, uh, if you move to file, uh, to pass to a second reading, then you force that to come to a vote. And if that, Immediately. Right. and if it cannot be passed to a second reading, then it's done. Then it's done. And, and that's really where they had and to it's get to last done. night, right? Right. So that's how they get to get to. So, so that's what happened. So there was how did they did they have to get a vote to get it to a to, to vote on a second reading? Had they had Tim Toomey not made a motion uh, to to pass to a second reading, literally oh. hoping the same would not prevail, um, in fact, um, then it then it would have just stayed in committee. I see. So right? he so a, he, a counselor he, can bring up the. He made okay. the motion. He made the motion. He made the motion, and there were five votes to say no right. to that. Right. So it got negative action. Yeah. It's dead in the yeah. water. Yeah. Right. Now some people are saying like, "Oh my gosh, my God! Now we can't talk about it for two years." Well, that's crap. There's the, the cities this, talking this about lot. Envision, Envision Cambridge is yeah. doing it. The Economy yeah. Action Group is doing yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, there are all sorts of other things that. You, that activities that are going on here within mm -hmm. the community development department. Yep. This is not dead in the water. It's just that the petition is dead in the water. Can someone else, not them, file something similar and still be counted as different? I don't. I think that would be viewed as it, as trying um, to get around the get trying to work around. Right. Yeah. So I think the answer to that is no. I mean, you'd have to ask the city solicitor for sure, but I think the answer would be no. Hmm. So um, I don't think this is a bad outcome. I mean, the thing no, is, is that got people's attention. It got people's attention, and and it was an order from from the same councilor to me. Yeah, that was a pretty good to, order. To have the yeah. mayor form uh, form a task force that basically really is going to take all, all of the, of the right. What's essential doable, items what here, yeah. having mm -hmm. to do with climate resiliency. I thought that was a really nice and uh, and yeah. and and then move on from yep. there and just do it outside of the confines yes. of this petition. It was a great move, actually. Yeah, so. I, th I thank goodness. Glad wasn't the only thing that happened, so we'll talk about that yes. in, uh, in a few in minutes, in a minute half. or so here, all right?